web cartoonists, or web comics, broadly speaking, are having this explosion of new characters that you would never see before. Um, Akewood is producing some of the darkest, but also some of the most interesting characters you've ever seen. And uh, I, could, I could rattle off a list of, of characters that, and, and, and cartoonists uh, for whom that is not an issue. So there we do pretty well. Um, the one issue, and I think you guys will recognize this, that he really expressed concern about, was that comic strips are forced to sort of uh, to marry with merchandising and licensing, which overall cheapens comics as he saw it, cheapens the art form, lowers the, diminishes the quality of the art itself for the, for the sake of capitalism. And here, no argument. Watterson would absolutely hate web comics. He would hate the idea, I think, um, that, uh, that the comic itself does not generate income it's all the, it's all the uh, secondary products around the comic strip that, that, uh, that produce income. So there, I think, web comics would fail miserably in his mind. And, and frankly speaking, I, the sad truth of it is he would not be, if web comics were the default business model, he would not be working. He would not want to do it. Um, it would be a genius loss to the American and the international landscape. So um, in that regard, it fails. Uh, cartoonists, uh, he also expressed, sorry, I'm trying to do what I can with that photo. Uh, <laughs> this one goes too far, though, I think. Um, so another concern that he had is that cartoonists who have their assistants draw the strip or write the strip are a little too much hand in it, who take away, or who put too much artifice into the art, if you know what I mean. Um, and again, webcomics, not an issue here. There's a little bit too much of the art artist's hand in every part of the process with webcomics, so that's not an issue. Um, and the last one that he expressed concern was, was the shrinking size of, of newspapers, or sorry, the, the shrinking size of comics that newspapers gave. And, um, here, I can speak to the power of webcomics to being able to break out of the horizontal format where the joke requires. Um, I did a Harriman tribute strip a couple of weeks, or a couple of years back, where um, for no particular reason at all, I was able to stretch down to what was, a, I think, a 36-inch tall comic strip, um, which would never ha have happened in a, in a newspaper. Um, I've done strips on various subjects where, for whatever reason, in a sort of a Scott McCloud way, they trail off in different directions um, for the sake of the joke. And uh, it's a wonderful thing when a cartoonist can do that, when they're in control of their own domain, so to speak, and can, and can craft the, the layout and the format for a strip that works best for the joke, that works best for the story, that works best for that character moment. Um, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful thing. So um, in there, webcomics do pretty well. Um, and, and so two final thoughts from, um, from Watterson's speech that, that kind of resonate with me now. He said, and I'll read this, Obviously, if I had any business savvy at all myself, I'd lump the whole syndicate business tomorrow and self-publish, which I find very interesting um, given the, the discussion around webcomics. Um, as I said, I think it's a more uh, self-empowering, more uh, enlivening life for a cartoonist to be able to control your destiny like this. I find it, I mean, sort of, I will be honest here, my greatest failure as a cartoonist was never attaining syndication. Growing up, that's what I wanted. I wanted it so bad. And I could, I could taste it and feel it slipping away that I would never get syndication. Um, but my greatest failure has turned in, thankfully, to, I think, a better life for me. Uh, web cartooning has been such a joy-filled process. Uh, and I want to impart that to you, that it's not necessarily something to be feared. It can be a great, great life for a cartoonist. Um, and the last thing Watterson said was, with the right publishing, comics can move into whole new worlds we've never seen. Moreover, I think any effort to improve the quality of comics would be very likely rewarded in the marketplace. And this I have seen with my own, uh, with my own eyes. I, um, my webcomic, Knock on Wood, has been graced in, in that it's provided me a very nice life. But we've also seen that really innovative, really interesting, really well-produced webcomics have given their creators audiences in the millions who are not passively reading, mind, mind you. They are actively seeking out every day this comic strip. Um, and so I think, you know, echoing Watterson's thought, it's this, it's the, the marketplace is responding to this new and interesting art form by, by, you know, millions of footfalls every morning clicking on Kate Beaton's site, for example, which the theme of historical comics never would have, you know, you never would have imagined that that would produce such a, 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 a massive audience. Um, so anyway, as a final thought, uh, I don't want you to go away from this talk thinking that I'm an all-out proponent of webcomics. Um, I am not. I'm, uh, I'm a realist and I recognize that webcomics don't work for all types of comics. They don't work for all types of cartoonists. It's not a business model that everybody wants to or could even if they wanted to adapt to. Um, that's true, by the way, though, for, for every platform of comics that has ever existed. You and I both know that if only syndication existed, Robert Crumb would have been an unrecognized genius. He never would have found an audience. 
Um, on the flip side, if Watterson, like I said before, only had the default of web comics, it would have been a, a voice lost to a generation. He would have hated, I think, to do what I do or have to do. Um, to put himself out as an artist, uh, to deal with the audience interaction, um, and to have to get involved with the business side of things. I think he would have hated that. So um, I recognize that that's true for every platform and it's true for web comics. With this new distribution model and this new business model for cartoonists, there will be geniuses that will go unrecognized. Likewise, there will be geniuses that never would have found the light of day before that will be celebrated in our culture. So it's, 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 you know, it's a mixed bag of blessing and curse. So uh, this is my way of saying that web comics will not work for everyone. Uh, I can tell you unequivocally, they will not work for editorial cartoonists. It's a model that won't work. Um, and it makes me sad because that's been a great voice in American life. Um, and and webcomics are not a rising tide that will lift all boats. Uh, they work, but they work for a specific type of artist. And while webcomics have already produced a few very, you know, very rich cartoonists, my gut tells me that it will never produce the truly rich cartoonists that we've seen in the past, um, you know, in the heydays of the 50s, 60s, 70s even. Um, but here is the, the truly wonderful thing, and I, th I think you will agree with me that this is a truly wonderful thing. I think that webcomics will produce more careers in cartooning, um, more journeyman cartooning, if you, if you want to put it one way. People that make comfortably somewhere between fifty dollars and $150,000 a year. Um, so you won't have the millionaires that we've had in the past of, of these huge licensing deals. But you will have, I think, more cartoonists that make a comfortable, tidy living in their little fiefdom with a couple of assistants in the studio, handling their business with them, and making a very comfortable life and, enjoy, and interacting with an audience of between 40 and 200,000 people, say, around the world. Um, and I personally think that that's an awesome thing. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I think that's a sign of a, a source of optimism. Um, because in, in a time when not only from newspapers, but in magazines and freelance work, when all these other options for cartoonists are drying up, web comics are one of the few fields, one of the few paths, however you want to say it, where more and more careers are being made year on year. So. Uh, it's, 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 it's amazing to me. It's, it's amazing to me that it works. So um, just, as, you know, just as comics have always done, comics will survive this platform change. They will, they, will, um, they will keep going on as an art form, as a beautiful art form, as a powerful individual voiced art form uh, in American and international life. So the medium of newsprint may be dying, but my, my final thought is that the art form is enjoying a mini renaissance and, and has hope for the future. So, so, but I thought I'd open it up for, uh, for questions um, because, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion among cartoonists to have. Um, so, yes.